This is Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah. We're going to do a little bit more Aries here before we go. Um, we're we're, we're going to move on to sign nine, which is Taurus. Now, this is Jeremiah with New Covenant, and we're rejoicing together with you in the Lord and in the God of our salvation. There's one Savior, and that's Jesus. And we've gotten into a little bit of deity here. We've talked about the equality of the Father and the Son. And we've gotten into quite a few things here as we wrap this up. There only should be more two or three more videos. There'll probably be, probably be 50 science videos, and I'm going to shut down uh, and move on. I have some faith lessons that I'm preparing, and I'm very happy with them. We're going to go over a lot of the basics about Christian faith. And... Uh, and some people get confused, but don't, 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 don't try to do too much. Don't get confused. Let, let me share something with you. When you become a Christian, you repent and, you, and you're baptized and so forth, and you, you find a place to get baptized as soon as you can. It doesn't have to be immediately because they may not be baptizing in your church. But you can go ahead and repent and, uh, and be saved, okay? Now, as far as all of the study and subsequent stuff that you do with your life, Okay, remember, that comes after all of the initiation. Most of what we teach here is post-initiation, okay? It's the parable of the sower. It's, uh, you know, where we're dealing with the life of a Christian most of the time. So don't get confused. A lot of people, I was talking with a pastor here the other day. Um, I think he's assistant pastor. But I think he was getting a little confused as to initiation, when you first get started, and the rest of your life, because there's basically two periods, okay? And I talk about that if you're interested in, uh, that should be Playlist 42, which it, which should be up there. If it's not up there, it will be up there, okay? And that's Playlist number 42, okay? Or I talk about Christianity is basically two periods. And uh, anyway, and of course there, well, let, let, let that go. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about Aries, and then we're going to move on. We're going to get to number nine, and we should be done in a couple more videos. And we greet you in the only name given amongst men by which you must be saved. And we talked about Pisces. We're done, which is basically people people can, uh, what's a good word for your Bible? that we uh, Goodwill towards men. That's kind of what Pisces means. It means that a lot of people have had an opportunity to serve the Son, and to love the Son, and those who did are free. And those who didn't take advantage of it are chained. And, and that also goes to your human life. You know, that, that your life, you have, you have the ability to be a caring person and to be kind, or you can be a mean person and not tell the truth and so forth. And so we have two different worlds. We have two different... Uh, we have two different masters and two different lifestyles, okay? And that's essentially what Pisces means, okay? Uh, so we have, I, I have up there the once anointed uh, cherub, which is what, what we might refer to as the sea monster, uh, which could be also considered uh, um, the devil or the enemy and the enemy's camp and all that, okay? The leadership. Now, when we go to Aries, we're getting into the leadership of the Lord and how he's wise, just like he was in Sagittarius. He knew exactly where to point the arrow. He knew exactly how to destroy the authority that was given to the world. The world was given authority over uh, Adam and Eve when they got kicked out of the garden. God gave the authority of their life and their circumstances uh, under the power of the world's powers and the world's enemies to God. In other words, when Adam and Eve made that mistake, it was a big one. And what, what it did was it put them in the world and in the city and in the, in the environment, you know, the agriculture, the ocean, the, you know, the rivers, everywhere they went, they were basically under the authority of the enemies of God. Why? Because they became the enemies of God. See, the enemies of God are people who don't listen to what God says. And also, they don't love God. And they also don't love the truth. 
So when you join that group, you're going to hang around that group. And that's unfortunately what happened to our great-grandparents, and that's what happened to us. We were thrown into this world full of confusion, and the Bible calls it vanity. In other words, we keep trying to find happiness and find the right road, but we just can't find it. I went, I went to go get a, a dinner, and all I got was vegetables. And all you get is half of this and half of that and nothing. And, and you never really get satisfaction until you come to Jesus Christ. That's the point. Now, the, the good shepherd is there available for, in sign number eight, he's available for the world, especially in the 2,000-year period that just expired. From the church of Ephesus which is probably John and, and the mother of Jesus establishing the first church with Peter and so forth. And then we have other churches developing. And those are people who have decided to serve the Son. That's what it means. They were given an opportunity and led to Jesus Christ, and they accepted the offer to serve. We have that famous song, I will serve you because I love you. Love and service are the same thing. My parents were always there to serve 24-7. When I was, ever since I was, uh, when, when, uh, until I moved out of the house, they were always there every day. There was not one day that, that they weren't there just looking and taking care of you. So service meant love, so I know what love is. Love is not Mickey Mouse care. That's called affection. You can use the word phileo, uh, Phileo can be used for, for uh, true love, so to speak. However, the word agape is solid as a rock. It means that it's high love. Okay, that's what that word means. You're dealing with God, and you're dealing with devotion, and you're dealing with a very serious love. You're dealing with truth and honesty and purity. Whenever you use the word agape, or you're dealing with a Christian who has become mature. Okay? A mature Christian knows how to love, and knows how to keep sin out of, sin out of his life. And God is giving, giving uh, all Christians basically time to, as we say in America, get your act together and take it on the road. You know, get, get your, uh, your lifestyle and get your office and your church duties, get them in line and get going. And when that, and when that office work is interrupted as a yoke fellow, as Paul said, which means you're, you're a servant and you're working, uh, even a bond slave, and you are going to work, and you're not going to interrupt that work. And if you interrupt your work, that means you interrupted your love. That's why Jesus came to Peter and said, do you love me? Because he stopped working in the church. He stopped binding up the brokenhearted. See, if you love Jesus, you'll bind up the brokenhearted. That's the first thing Jesus said. He told his parents, wouldn't you know that I would be in my father's house? They couldn't find him. All they had to do was go to church. That was the point. But the first thing the master taught was, was the spirit of the Lord is upon me to bind up broken hearts. Okay? And to, and to set at liberty those who are captive and to bring light to those who sat in a great darkness and, on, and, and to make... Uh, the rough, smooth, and in other words, get everything in order. Okay, well, let's stop the madness, and let's, let's get everybody in order, let's bring peace to the situation, soul rest to the human, and a good future for you. And that's what we teach here. It's very simple, isn't it? And when you become a Christian, and you, after you've been a Christian for a while and so forth, you, you're just like Peter, after three years of training, you enter, enter into an office. You have some sort of responsibility in the church. It doesn't matter what it is. Generally, now if you, now if you don't have an opportunity to do that, some of you may not have that opportunity. You may, you may not even have a church around you. And that's one wonderful thing about Jeremiah here with New Covenant. And we're getting into this uh, biblical astrology here. And uh, we're on, I'm going to finish up Aries here in a moment. But I, I want to mention that a lot of you out there, you know, some of you may not have an opportunity to find a church. Well, I, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to to get you going. 
to get started. And, and as far as uh, where you would end up as far as a, a church duty, what if you're under Sharia law? I think Afghanistan just went back into Sharia law. So you, you, the women have no opportunity to preach the gospel or to even show any of their body at all, their legs, their face. But that's right. So I'm here to, to offer you an opportunity if you're in Japan or if you're in lockdown in China. Uh, there's a big lockdown now. They said they wanted to fix the COVID spread, but actually what they're doing is spreading it. When they had everybody line up to get a COVID check, that's when the COVID probably got worse. I'm not going to go into that. I'm just saying that uh, some, some uh, experts have said that they should have never had them line up for checkup. Why would, why would you lock everybody up so that they don't spread uh, COVID and then have them all line up together to have a checkup every two or three days to make sure they don't have it. So anyway, we won't go into that. But what I'm saying is that uh, bottom line, or, or what, what I'm trying to say is, some of you out there have a lot of time on your hands and God's calling you to use this ministry and other ministries maybe. I used to always supplement my Bible teacher. Well, not always, but uh, when I got a little older, I used to attend multiple churches or I would listen to multiple Bible teachers. Let's put it that way. Like having a commentary, okay? Some of you are devoted to one Bible teacher and so forth, and that's fine with whatever the Lord has for you. Now, let's get to, uh, I made a couple of moments here talking about the sea monster and the, and the two fish there and, uh, and how the, uh, the, the idea was that there's basically two groups of people who are called. And the Bible says that many are called, but few are chosen. Cassiopeia is essentially chosen. But Andromeda and Cassiopeia both were called, which means they had both, they both had an opportunity. Some were wise and took advantage of the opportunity. They're called Cassiopeia. Some were unwise, and, and, and that could be general in your general life. Not necessarily serving the Lord. But since the Lord is everywhere and everything, we put it under that context, okay? That, that the context is, is that Old Testament, New Testament, no matter where you are, you have an opportunity to love people and be kind and to be truthful. And those are the people who are the winners uh, throughout all of mankind. In the New Testament, you have to come to Jesus Christ when you have the opportunity to do so. Okay? If you have an opportunity to, to go to a church and repent and be baptized and serve the Lord with your whole heart and you don't do it, that's called bad news. That's called ouch. And, and we can take that to the, uh, I won't say the bank, but we, we, we can take that to, it's done. You know what I mean? It's just done at that point. Opportunity offered, opportunity squandered. And we talked about that earlier. We, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. Jeremiah chapter 2, we just left there. Now let, let's get to Aries, and I'll, we're going to wrap this up and go to, go to number 9, which is Taurus. Now, Matthew 2, 2, where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, and are come to worship him. So we're dealing with the three kings of Orient who are from the east, who have come because the stars, generally, for those who study the stars, uh, depending upon where the stars' movement are, and that, that star movement is in the astrodome, which is glass, above your head, and they move around in the glass, evidently. And, uh, and that's quite obvious, but what, what, what they saw was that a star was revealing a new king, and, and, and that king was in this area, which we call... Israel. So they came based upon the stars, and they studied the stars, and they said, where's the king? Okay, we saw his star rise in the east, and we're coming to worship him. So are they coming to worship him because he is king of kings and lord of lords, or that he is a king of the Jews only, and so forth? We'll let that go. That, that's another subject. Let's go to, so we have governor that shall rule my people Israel. So there's another scripture. Now the governor shall rule my people Israel. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about uh, areas, okay? 
And I mentioned to you before that it's basically a, a supervisor. Uh, then we have the star Sirius, uh, which means uh, Lord or Lord God. Uh, and, and we get the word Sir from Sirius. So we have underfoot. Uh, that means that the Lord's going to have everybody underfoot. And that, and that uh, the Lord has a primary goal and, and a need for mankind. And that's what those stars mean when we go to El Nath and so forth, these, these star names, even Sirius, it, it means that the Lord God or the ruler has everyone under underfoot, and this ruler has a primary goal, and that is to be a ruler for the sheep that need a sheep. In other words, there's a need for a shepherd. And fortunately, we who have a need for a shepherd, we have a good shepherd when we come to Jesus Christ, okay? I am the good shepherd, and I know my sheep, and my sheep know me. Now, how do we know the shepherd? Through his scriptures and through his spirit within us. His love spirit within us is teaching us. It's called the comforter. And it's called the spirit of truth. And that's power, okay? That's dunamis from Father. And he has ordained it. And, and a Greek word that might fit uh, the good shepherd might be exousia. That means authorized power. So the Lord knows how to authorize power for the betterment of mankind. The Lord is trying to save as many people as he can legally. And even people who are lost and want to be lost and, and want to do the wrong things, he's still coming to them. So that nobody perishes. Okay, that's the point. The, 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 the good shepherd doesn't want to lose any humans. He purchased all humans. And he's not willing that anybody should perish, but that all should come to the repentant knowledge that saves your soul. And you have to come to that knowledge, and he's the one who's giving it. He's the one that's offering eternal life. And that's living bread, and he is living bread. that came down from heaven, that if any man eat this bread, which means you have to eat the commands of the Lord. Adam and Eve did not eat the commands of the Lord. They rejected the commands of the Lord. That's why we're in the mess we're in now. But the Lord came to offer a... a a trip back to Eden again. And all you have to do is this time listen to the commands. Which start with what? Go to the River Jordan, confess your sins, be sorry for your sins, repent and be baptized, and snap, crackle, pop, you're on your way to salvation and eternal life. There you go. That starts the journey. And the person who authored all of this confidence in truth that we all lost. We, we, we lost confidence that, that, that the commandments were good for us. I, I, Adam and Eve said, oh, and the devil said, hey, maybe, maybe commandments aren't that, aren't that valuable. Eve, and you too, Adam, maybe what God said is not all that important. The same thing applies today when I pass out Bibles. People say, I, I don't think that repentance and baptism in this Bible are worth my time and I don't think it's that valuable, and I don't think if there is a God that he should make me do this, and we have all of these excuses. That's the point. I, I don't want to have normal relationship with people, and, 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 and so forth. And that's what makes you Andromeda. Andromeda basically means I'm all over the place. And that chains you. It, you. You get chained when you reject order, when you, you get out of order. It's like joining the army and you got a dishonorable discharge because you wouldn't do what you were supposed to do and you didn't get in line. So you lost your honor of being a soldier. That You, you lost the honor of having the, the ability to serve your God. And the commandments, as John said, they're not burdensome. They're going to cause some problems for you in general, uh, from people bothering you and, and, uh, and persecuting you, and maybe even worse, but fundamentally, it, it's not something that, that, that you can't carry around. And, because you were carrying some problems before you became a Christian, you who are adults, you were carrying worries and concerns and, 
you know, and all of this, and then you came to Jesus Christ, and now you're set free. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. So now you're free, and you're free from all these psychological problems of what's going to happen tomorrow. Should I do this? Did I do the right thing? I, I, I didn't perform well enough. You know, the book of Galatians, you know, uh, Paul is saying, oh, this is slavery, a performance stuff. You know, I, I, I better perform this. I, I better go do that. And I should have done this better. And, 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 and that's called psychological slavery. That's what it is. I should have did this, and I was too lazy, and I made too many mistakes, and all that. No, 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 no. All that stuff is gone now. You're free from your performance now. The only performance we're looking at right now is the successful purchase. Uh, we looked at it in Libra, which was payment uh, needed, payment offered, payment received. Toleo in the Greek. It's done. There's no more need for anybody to go through, go down the, you know, climb a mountain, and, and what they say in Catholicism you have to pay penance and pay this and do that. We, we, we don't believe in that. We, 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 uh, we declare that as error. All of us, uh, I, I have to do this and I should have did that. No. Christianity is really easy to perform. And, 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 it's, and you're going to be a winner in this, in this uh, walk and, and in this uh, uh, battlefield. Uh, of Christianity, you're going to win this battlefield, win this battle, because you're going to strap on the love of Jesus Christ. That's, that's the key. You're going to strap on the love of Jesus Christ. So that now these three abide, faith, hope, and love. I just went over my lesson. I'm going, into, uh, I'm going over a new lesson on faith where I talked about uh, 5.3. In, in, uh, digitally in this new matrix here, playlist, which is, is it saving faith that you, that you have? Is the confidence you have in God the right kind of confidence so that you're a winner in all of this? Because some people have confidence in God, his abilities, but they're not, they're not going to own their soul. And uh, we'll get into that later. So we have the... the Elnaf and the Asilus Australis, and we have that, those two stars, or those stars refer to, to the Lord has everything under his foot, and he's going to take uh, the, the, the path that is best for you as the leader, as your leader, as the leader of the flock. He's always going to take you to the best place to go. He's always going to take you where it's safe. He's always, going to take, he's always going to provide for you uh, uh, sweetly. And that's why we can go to Psalm 23. And I've mentioned early on in this ministry that Psalm 23 is, is where I parked for a long time. I have, a, I have a lesson, Psalm 23. Available on my old uh, channel. I'm going to probably bring it over here. You should probably see it up here. But, but let, let, let's get back to what I wanted to say. The Good Shepherd is is good, and that's what makes this whole situation good. That's the whole point of Aries. We're going to move on, okay? Is that he has the eyes and ability and, and the thoughts, uh, the, 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 the ability to watch over the sheep so that, so that the lions don't eat the sheep, and he can protect the sheep. And every time the enemy comes, he's wise enough and powerful enough to vanquish the enemy that comes after you. In other words, when you look at these 12 signs, what, what you come away with, if you're looking at the whole scenario, is, is you're, looking at, you're looking at a very caring child who started out from Mary, who grew up, and his only goal was to shepherd people who were lost. That's the point. He's still Almighty God. He, he, you know, he still has a throne in heaven. Uh, however, he, he, he wants to divide his time to being sovereign and king of kings and, and almighty God sitting up in heaven, he wants to divide his time to come down here and get people who want love and want truth. And he wants to supervise them. That's what that means, okay? Don't miss the smoke in the trees kind of thing here. And some of you might get a little lost and always go back to square one. John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he's doing all of this stuff. 
He wants to care properly. That, that's what that's what uh, Aries means to care and be an overseer. Both of my parents were perfect Aries. That's what they were. Always there, all the time, always making the right decision. Uh, it was kind of scary. It would, everything was always in order all the time. We went on a vacation. We never had a flat tire. We we never got lost going to, uh, on the freeways. We. Uh, that's that's called Aries. Okay. Okay. So that's called in charge and taking care of business, as we say here in America. That's that's called, you know, a leader that you don't mind leading. You don't mind. I don't. I didn't mind my dad leading. He always had the food. He always knew where to go. He always came home. We always had a bed to sleep in. We had a dessert. We had a TV. We had a yard to play in. We had uh, uh, plenty of animals. Oh, wait a minute, is, is there something lacking here? Nothing. So, I already know what God is like. That's why a lot of these young people are violent in the streets and so forth, because they never had parents like mine. They, they don't know how God is or how good that fountain of waters is uh, uh, in the church. I do. I tasted that water, and it's good water. I mean, it, it, it really makes you slap happy, you know. I mean, I don't want to say slap happy, but that's why we have that song, He has made me glad. I thank my God, for he has made me glad. Okay, there you go, the oil of gladness poured on you. Okay, how can you beat that? <laughs> so... Let's move on. I'm not going to go through every detail here because we're taking up a lot of time. I, I want to shut down. And I mentioned a couple star names, such as Sirius um, and, of course, El Nath. And we mentioned uh, Arcelus Australis. And all of these uh, stars basically support the idea of a good shepherd, which we can read in Psalm 23 and close this out. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So that's the point of this uh, this. Uh, this um, astrology sign, that the, the Lord is a shepherd, and therefore he's, he's a good Lord, and you're in like Flint, as we used to say. You, uh, you've got the right one. You're, you're, you're in good shape, because you're not going to have any wants there. And I emphasize that early in this ministry, and I've kind of gotten away from it, because we're, we're going to emph emphasize different things. But Psalm 23 is like one of the core ideas, obviously, of your Bible. Because if you don't have any wants, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, when I was growing up, nobody told me that you could you could have no wants. Even my parents kind of, uh, I think my parents mentioned that, with, but they didn't hammer it home like like uh, like I'm going to hammer it home for you. And, and what you need to uh, really focus on, maybe a little more than than what I was raised with, is that, and that is is that if the Lord is your shepherd, this Mister Aries right here, you don't have any wants. And if you do have a want, it's, it's a beautiful want. It, it's, it's, it's going to work out to your advantage. James chapter 1, is, so there, uh, count it all joy when you fall into different problems. It's manifold, that means many colored, or many different types of challenges and, and persecutions and so forth. And long-suffering circumstances, well, that, that's a good situation for you. You need to add that up as, as, as whoa, that's going to come out to your advantage. I'm going to tell you a quick story. I had a friend who told me that his, some of his relatives were being uh, abusive to him in some ways. And I told him, I said, listen, let, let me share something to you, with you. And uh, maybe you already know this. Let me remind you or share this with you that the innocent one always ends up ruling the guilty. When all the smoke clears... The innocent one will rule the guilty every time. The innocent one might be in bad circumstances for a long time, uh, whereas the guilty are in charge for a month, a year, two years, ten years. But when all the smoke clears, as the Bible says, the valleys will become mountains, and the mountains will become valleys. And I told this gentleman who I was uh, hanging out with in California, I told him, I, 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 I always remember that, because he, 
He told me that some of his relatives or friends, whoever, they were, they were taking advantage of their relationship. And I told him, you continue to turn the other cheek, love them unconditionally uh, to a point, and you'll find yourself in charge when the smoke clears. See, that's what Jesus did when we looked at Capricorn here. He allowed himself to get run over like a truck. He, he didn't cry out his voice in the streets. And where did he end up? Taking over legally the entire demographic. That's what we're doing here. We're learning, just like Jesus, to, 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 to take, the, take it on the chin so that some people can be uh, loved and cared for. That's what we do. And, and, and when the smoke clears, guess who's going to be in charge? I'm going to go through that in my beauty lesson. In my beauty lesson, I go into this in detail, what I'm talking about right now. When the mountains, uh, who used to be the valleys, become the mountains. Okay, we're going to wrap this up. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And that's the key. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me besides the quiet or still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yes, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now you can't get, it. You can't get anything better than that, in, in, probably in your whole Bible. Our lovable Jesus Christ, that's his grandfather, really dropping you some knowledge right there. They said, you, you, you can't beat all of that. It, it would take a year to go through it. I, I go through that on my, on my uh, shepherd lesson, and I'm going to switch that over here to this channel, and it should be there for you, but where I go through this psalm, and you talk about a very important piece of literature here. I, I used to teach, I used to... Uh, uh, go through the libraries there, the, the downtown Los Angeles library, the library at the university, and I've been through a lot of books, and I'm here to tell you one thing. There's nothing like that Psalm 23. There's nothing like it. That thing just smokes with goodness. It's, <laughs> it's too many good things in one little thing, one little, you know, one little psalm. I'm not going to go through it right now. I want to make the point, the overarching point, that that's a good shepherd who does all of that for you. And it all starts with, uh, you don't have any want. If you have all the things that we just read, you don't want for anything. Uh, Daddy's taking good care of you. <laughs> that's, that's, and uh, even though you're walking through the valley of the shadow of death, you know, there's all kinds of problems and scary moments and whatever, you're still a winner. Amazing stuff right there. It's just, uh, in this whole Bible, I would have to say that is one of the two or three most powerful areas in your Bible, and there's only a few verses there. There's uh, six verses, that's all. I'm here to tell you that is some mighty stuff. I, boy, you talk about getting taken care of and getting taken care of by Mr. Aries. Woo! Mr. Aries can take very good care of you if you get Psalm 23. <laughs> We're going to shut down right here. I'll be right back with some more of biblical astrology. We're going to go to 9 in Taurus, and that's going to get into power. The powerful... Uh, and We're going to get into some intel, too, because... Taurus has some uh, decans, and by the way, let me remind you, I'm not going into all the decans right now. I, I've mentioned a few of them, but just a few. Uh, I mentioned Coma, I think I mentioned Aruga, I mentioned uh, Hercules, uh, then there's Hydra, which is not, a, which is not actually a sign. Uh, it, it, that is also a decan, which probably belongs to Scorpio, I think it does. In other words, there's a lot to learn here, but we're going to stick to a narrow path here. For those of you who are interested... There are a lot of Christian brethren who go into all the details before you. When I go to Taurus, I'm going right through Taurus. I might mention Pleiades, Orion, or a few things like that, but that's it. We're not going to go into every little, you know, 
Orion's belt, you know, Medusa's head, and all that. There's a whole lot here, but we're going to talk on this cursory, and I'm going to move on, okay? And by the way, I've decided to do that. I've decided not to get uh, in-depth in this at this time. Because it's going to require much more work, and I already have some stuff I want to give to you, such as a revision of faith. I had one of my listeners ask me about my new faith lesson because they were interested in it. And I told them that I have a new one coming up, and they, they thought that, you know, they, they were excited about, or I guess a little excited, about uh, having the opportunity to listen to my faith lesson because my faith lesson comes from years of study. I go online and talk to pastors or communicate with them, and I can tell that they really don't understand faith that well, but God's going to use them. And we're, we're, we're not here to compare each other and say, Billy's better than Cindy and all that. No, 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 no. It's teamwork here. You know, there's only one teacher here. I'm just an under-teacher. Okay? That's me. I'm not the shepherd. I'm an under-shepherd, So we're talking about shepherd right now, Okay. I shall not want. Woo! A lot of people don't know how powerful that is. I shall not want. That is awfully powerful. I turn my TV on, my computer on. We're talking about, I want this. I want success. I, I, I didn't do this. I want more. I, and it's sad because they're not reading their Bible and they're not born, to, born again. Born again people who have gotten into... Uh, maturity in Jesus Christ, experience, uh, and, and they're no longer Gino, but, but they're oida in the Greek, then they're going to understand that. I don't have any wants here at all. I've, and then when, then when they do have a want, they go to James chapter 1 and elsewhere, and it's going to turn out all good. How can, you can't beat this Bible. The Adams family should have never gotten rid, as the Bible said, and forsake this living water here, this fountain here, of love and truth and intellect. And uh, it's sad to see people who reject all of this intellectual uh, stimuli here. It's, what are you doing? I, I meet people all the time. Let's, I'm going to move on. We've gone pretty long here, longer than normal. Uh, I'm going to shut down. Jeremiah is on fire, and we're going to... We're going to um, Look for the coming of the Lord right now. Every five minutes or so uh, in 2022 in these lessons, I'm going to stop the lesson and remind you that, you know, don't, don't let's, let's uh, focus, you know. While we're learning here, we're also anticipating being with the one that you love dearly, okay? Got that? And he is Mr. Aries. He is the good shepherd. He's going to give you all these nice things. Make you lie down. And make your cup run over. You, you can't beat having a cup that's running over. I, I don't know how you can beat that. That's better than half a cup. Okay, or, or a small portion, right? You know, here you go. Daddy's going to pour a cup for you, and it's going to flow over the top. Okay, okay. It, it doesn't get any better than this Christian stuff here. I, I, don't, I don't know... Uh, uh, you you found it. They used to have a sticker here in the United States where people put it on their car. I found it. Okay, well, okay. They must have found Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to shut down. This is a long lesson. We're going to go to Taurus there. Maranatha. <laughs>